Hello and welcome. Today we are doing a question from Leak Code called Meek Pads. It is a medium. Now we've actually done this one before and I've linked part one in the description below. We're going to be picking up right from where we left off. So if you want to take a quick look at the video, you can do that. If not, just make sure you understand how the DP solution works because we're going to be building off of that. So jumping right in, we wanted to go from the top left to the bottom right and find as many meek pads as we could. And someone actually in the comments pointed out that the way that DP was running wasn't exactly how we were expecting it to. So what's happening here is that we're appending the same row multiple times, which is not something that we intended to do each time we wanted to append a new row and we didn't really care about what was happening before because we were only interested in the very last value of this 2d array but if we really want to do this the proper way um, instead of creating shallow copies we want to create a deep copy because what's happening was that each pointer pointed to the same location memory instead of making another copy in which we could then append the row onto DP, we were just changing in one place. So everything pointed to this one row, and every time we updated the row, all the other rows were being updated. So the right way to do this would be initializing DP to empty and looping in a range. So for I in range, um, this is an M by N, I'm going across. Uh, so N, and then here I'm going to create an empty row. To add so then for j in range n i'm going to add one to my row and add this row to dp so dp dot append row and take this line out here run code now we can see what it's going to print um this is the wrong answer so for i in range n Oh, this is V M. Now we have a two by three. So we have the first row of all ones, and now we correctly append a new value without changing the previous ones. One, two, three. Granted, this doesn't affect what the answer was, but still, it's just good practice. Um, but this now brings us to an optimization that we can perform. Why were we able? To change all the other rows and still get to the right answer it means that we don't care about the other rows it's just extra memory that we can go without so i'm going to run an example um i'm going to run it on more values so we can clearly see seven three what they have over here and this is our answer so i'm going to copy paste and Okay, so what's happening here? We have ones across first row, ones going down columns. We start from here. What we did was we took the top value, then we took the right value, and we summed it up. Sorry, the top and the left, and summed it up to get two. And each time we went to the right, we took the top, what was to the left of it, and added that. So instead of making a new row each time, what if we just overwrote what we have already? So here, I would just, instead of this one, write a 2 here. That way, as I go down, I know that there is a 1 above and a 2 here, which I can get from what's beforehand. And now change this value to a 3. And going down, right, I can just take whatever's in here and add it to what's to the left. Because we're updating as we're going, this value is actually on the bottom row. If we're over here in this position, uh, right under the one. We know the top is one and we know the left is three because we updated the three. So all I have to do really is take whatever I have in my position and add what's to the left because we're overriding each time. So as we move down, one plus four is five, one plus five is six, and one plus six is seven. Now going again, two plus one is three. 3 plus 3 is 6, and you can see we're forming the same row that we had, just overwriting so we don't take up as much space. 6 plus 4 is 10, and we'll get the same answer 
as we had before. So 21 plus 7 is 28. And we just need that O of M space. So we can rewrite DP again. And erase what we had before and just do for I in range M. So for I in range M, I'm going to directly add to DP, DP append 1. And as we iterate through the grid, starting from this block here, all we have to do is take our current value and add whatever's to the left of it. So DP of column. Uh, column here is the index, so each time we go down a row, it's 0, 1, 2, 3. And it's just an O of M, so we just need indices of the columns. We just take whatever we have in it, because that represents the top and whatever's to the left. Um, which is actually going to represent the left. So whatever we have in here, plus what's to the left of column. So plus equals dp column minus 1. And what this is doing is taking dp column and adding whatever's in there right now with whatever is before it and reassigning it to dp column. And this is no longer a 2D array, so we just need minus 1. Let me code has no length. Oh, I can actually change these as well. This is length of n, length of m. Let me code. And it is accepted. And we only did this with O of m space. So let's submit. And it's accepted. Here we did this in O of m n one time and O of m space. But can we do better? Can we go a step further and look at the problem one more time? We want to go from the top left to the bottom right. Any path we take is always going to have two downs and six rights in it. Let's take a look at a simpler example, a three by two. We're always going to have two rights in any path we take and one down, two rights here two rights uh, on the two ends, and then two rights on the very end. Because to get from here to here, we have to go a total distance of six to the left, and then two down to get to this finish, no matter what order we do them in, right? So going by that logic, if we had, suppose, a seven by three grid, we would have to go down twice. So down, down, and then right one, two, three, four, five, six times. Right, 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 right. How many ways can we arrange this? If you've ever taken a probability course, this is a simple combination. This is n choose r. If you don't know the formula, I'm going to go over it super quickly. Essentially, what we want to do is we want to find a way to arrange this entire path. So we have a total of eight slots, two downs, six rights. How many ways can we arrange eight slots? Well, we have eight possible values for the first one, then seven because one was taken for that first slot, then six, five, four, three, two, one. So that is just factorial of eight, eight factorial. And in here, we wanted to do unique paths. So if we had D1, D2, and then six Rs, this is the exact same as D, 2d1 because we want to look for unique paths. We don't want permutations, we want combinations. The ordering of d2, d1 does not matter. So here we don't want to double count all of our possibilities we did when we did factorial 8, right? Because we found all possible combinations, including like the rotation of d2, d1. So we want to divide by how many possible ways there are to actually arrange d2, d1. Well, this is two slots, and same as before, it's just factorial two. Similarly, we have six Rs. There are factorial six ways to arrange them. And because we don't want to double count, all we're going to do is make this a fraction. So factorial eight over factorial two times factorial six. And this is the n choose R formula. So all we have to do is apply this, return factorial of m 
plus n minus 2. Why minus 2? Because we only have to go to the right m minus 1 times down n minus 1 times. So if we want to see what the total is, it's m minus 1 plus n minus 1, m plus n minus 2. This factorial is now divided by factorial of n minus 1 and then times factorial of m minus 1. I'm just going to add another parenthesis in the denominator to make it clearer. Yes, and then I'm going to make this an integer. Let's run code. It is accepted and let's submit. And it is accepted as well. If you have any other questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.